Let's take a look at a question with a bond issued at a discount. Let's just get this pen working. Okay. So in this question, Cinderella Shoes Inc., a private company, follows ASPI, following ASPI and uses the straight line method. On January 1st, 2020, the company sold bonds with a face value of 1 million, receiving 800,000 in cash. The bonds have an interest rate of 8% and mature on January 1st, 2022. Interest is payable semi-annually on January 1st and July 1st. Prepare the company's journal entry for the January 1st issuance, July 1st interest payment, and the December 31st adjusting entry. Okay, so we are told here, let's take a look at what information we need from this question. So we can see that they're following ASPI, so they're using the straight line method. They could elect to use the effective interest method under ASPI, but it specifically says they're using the straight line method. So we know that's how we're gonna be amortizing through any discount or premium. We're also told that the company sold bonds with a face value of 1 million, but they only received 800,000 in cash. So we know from that fact that the bonds were sold at a discount. So the company sold is a million dollars of bonds at maturity of the bonds in January 2022. That they are going to have to pay back a million dollars to the bondholders. And at the date of issuance, they're only getting 800,000 in cash. So we know we're going to have a discount that we're going to need to amortize through the straight line method. So let's start out with the first entry that we're asked to prepare, which is the entry, entry for January issuance. So January 1st, 2020 issuance. So we know we're going to have debit cash and credit bond payable. We're going to need to set up that liability on our balance sheet or statement of financial position. And this is a long term liability because it's not due in the next year or operating cycle. It's due in two years, January 2022. And what did we receive in cash? Well, we know that bonds have a face value of a million, but on issuance, we only received 800,000 in cash. Okay, so now we've done the first entry. The next entry is the July 1st interest payment. Let's get rid of that. What's going on here? <clears throat> Sorry about that. July 1st. These are our questions from the previous videos. I'm not sure how we got out of order there. Okay, here we go. So the July 1st, 2020 interest payment. Okay, so let's figure out how we're going to amortize this. So we know we've got a million a million dollar of bond, face value bonds, and we've got we received eight hundred thousand dollars in cash at issuance. So the difference is going to be two hundred thousand, and this is our discount, right? Because it's we got less than the face value of the proceeds. And these bonds are for two years. We know they're from January 2020 to January of 2022. So we're going to take 200,000 divided by two years. And then we also need to remember that these bonds pay out interest twice a year. So they pay interest semi-annually on July, January 1st and July 1st. So we need to make sure we adjust our amortization period for that. So each period we're going to be, um, it's going to be half a year. So this is going to give us our per semi-annual period discount amortization, which is going to give us $50,000 per semi-annual. So we need to make sure we're really clear on the period. This is a really important part that can be missed, is making sure that you remember that we are going to be recording this entry every time we record an interest payment on these bonds. So we need to make sure it matches the period of the interest payment. If the interest payment was going to be paid out quarterly, which we've seen in previous questions, then we would have 3 over 12 as our adjustment for the discount amortization to make sure that we've got the right amount per period. So now we're going to record the entry for this. So our July 1st interest payment is going to be debit interest expense. And this goes right through our income statement as an expense on the bonds. Then we've got bond payable. So let's think about this. Are we increasing or decreasing the value of the bond payable? 
we are increasing because right now the bond payable is on our on our statement of financial position at 800,000 um, at maturity in two years we need it to be on our statement of financial position at a million so we know we're going to need to be increasing it so we're going to be crediting the bond payable to increase the liability bond bond liability or bond payable um, so that's where our amortization is going to go. And then, of course, we're also going to have cash for the actual interest payment. So let's calculate the actual interest on these bonds. So the interest is going to be just what's printed exactly on the bond certificate. So we know that there are million dollar bonds and it says that they pay out interest of 8%. So it's going to be a million times 8% and then adjusting it again for the semi-annual nature. So this is going to give us 400,000. Four hundred thousand is going to be the per period um, interest payment on these bonds per per every six months. So going back up to our entry, where was that? Here. So we know we've got the cash that we're going to actually pay out is the cash that the bondholders expect based on what's printed on the bond, which is this forty thousand. We know we're going to be amortizing the premium or the discount. I'm sorry, at fifty thousand. And the sum of these two is what's going to go through our income statement, which is 90,000. What's interesting here that's worth noting is that because it's a it's a discount that we're amortizing, we recognize an initial uh, our liability ends up being in our income statement at last. So we need to make sure that we know that when we pay the interest on the bond, we're we also are really playing an implicit um, interest as well in terms of increasing this bond liability. So it causes our the amount to go through our income statement to be a lot higher than it would be of a, of a premium. A premium would actually decrease the amount going through our income statement because we actually receive more. Um, the bonds cost us less overall. So you can see that the amount that's going through our income statement is more than the coupon on the bond. So the bondholders are only paying 40,000, only been paying 40,000 twice a year. But we also have to recognize the fact that we need to be increasing that liability on our statement of financial position, which results in a higher interest expense, the combination of those two things. Okay. Um, so we did that. And then now lastly, we just need to do the December 31st adjusting entry. So let me just add a page in here. What's going on here? Okay. Let's see. So our December 31st adjusting entry is gonna be the same, exactly the same as this. So our entries are always the same under straight line, but the difference is we're not gonna have this credit to cash because the cash is gonna be paid out on January 1st. So this is actually gonna become an interest payable in our December entry, but the amounts are all the same. You'd have your 90,000, your 50,000 bond liability amortization and your cash of 40,000. This, uh, this account will simply not be cash, it will simply be interest payable because the cash doesn't actually flow out until January 1st. The, this only happens in the straight line method where each entry is the same. So this entry is gonna repeat each interest period. You just need to think about whether it's a cash outflow or whether it's a payable outflow. Um, with the, in, the effective interest method, which we saw in some of our previous examples, these entries change every period. So your the liability, or sorry, the amortization of a discount or premium is not constant. It's changing to make sure that the effective yield is the same. Whereas in the straight line method, it's much more simple. The, the actual numbers stay the same. Okay, so now the next part of this question says, now assume the bonds were sold for 1.2 million. Record the same journal entries as in part one. Okay, so let's do this in a different color right beside so we can compare um, how these entries would be different. So, okay. So if the bonds were sold for 1.2 million, then of course our cash proceeds would change to say 1.2 million, 1.2 million, 1.2 million. 
Okay, so we got in those proceeds and now you can see that we have a premium. We got in more than the face value of the bonds. The bonds still have a face value of a million. We got in 1.2. So now rather than amortizing a discount, we're gonna be amortizing a premium. So it's the same calculation here. So we've got the 1 million face value of the bonds, but now we've got the 1.2 million here. So the difference is gonna be 200,000 again, but now it's a premium. So the calculation here is gonna be the same. It's still 200,000 divided by two years and a semi-annual period, but this amount is going to be, um, this amount is going to be a premium now. So let's look at our entry and see how that would be different. So our cash payment on the bonds hasn't changed. This is the same. But what is going to change is that this bond liability, before we had a credit because we were increasing the liability on our balance sheet, before we had the bonds on our statement of financial position at 200,000 and we needed them at a million at maturity. So we're going to be increasing that liability, meaning we needed to add to the credit balance of that liability. Now we need to decrease the value of the bonds on our statement of financial position because now, right now, they're on our statement of financial position at 1.2 million. And at maturity, we still have to pay back just a million. So we need them only, we need them to decrease each period so that at maturity, they're on our balance sheet at only a million. So let's change this. This is now going to be a debit bond payable or bond liability. So this is going to be a debit of 50,000, which means that our interest expense, which is still going to be a which means that our interest expense is going to be a credit now. So this is gonna to change to balance our entry. So now we've got 40,000 and 50,000. So now this is only gonna be 10,000. And it's actually gonna be a reduction to interest expense on our statement of financial position, which is really different because before we had 90,000 going through as an expense, now we've got it actually going through as a recovery. Okay. And then our ent adjusting entry is exactly the same as that. But again, this cash entry is gonna change into an interest payable and the amounts are gonna stay the same. So we're still gonna have a credit interest expense of 10,000, debit bond payable of 50,000 to decrease it and credit cash of 40,000. And that concludes part two of this question.